ABI is primarily a food company with more than 53 brands in its portfolio. It has a shoe and clothing brands and a beauty products portfolio. AVI has a market cap of 20 billion rand, a price to earnings ratio of 19.4 and a dividend yield of 2.7%. Looking at AVI, Paul, like you said a little earlier, mm. it was a bit of a takeover uh, target for Tiger Brands. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago and they weren't able to close that, which sort of makes sense because if they had had that as well, then, you know, 50 billion plus 20 billion, they would have totally dominated the space. And then other companies like Pioneer would have been in a long, long distant second position. So be that as it may, AVI soldiers ahead. It's got quality management team. Between them, Angus Band and Simon Crutchley done a great job over the years. The core historic part of the businesses are Irvin and Johnson, which is a bit of an up and down type of a buffet, fishing. It's got the Beckett's, you know, biscuit business and then Ellis Brown coffee creamers and all that sort of rubbish. And then uh, the snacks, so Willard's chips and all that sort of thing. A couple of years ago, Simon went big into buying shoe and clothing brands with the Spitz thing. And everybody thought he was mad, absolutely mad at the time. Because what does tea and coffee and fish have to do with, you know, Kurt Geiger shoes and Carvellas? But anyway, he's made it work and they've continued to add, you know, in that space. And obviously that's very hot because that's aspirational consumer type of thing. So the whole thing, the whole mix now seems to have done well. Everybody loves the stock. The PE is doing well. The only trouble is, as a potential mm -hmm. buyer, is look at that share price chart. You know, you really feel as though you're rushing in after the horses vaulted <laughs> to buy them at that level. But, you know, who knows? So lots of upside for the stock. They've also now recently acquired a Green Cross. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's a small acquisition for them. It, it will be earnings accretive, but uh, not much. Um, but it's a very interesting acquisition for them. It'll obviously fit into their whole uh, footwear side with the Spitz brand. I'm not sure what they're going to, what sort of cross synergies are going to happen there. But I'm sure it'll be something interesting. Uh, the the management there are very capable. So I mean, I'm sure that there's some good things in store for this acquisition. What are the risks uh, for AVI going forward when you look at things? My sense would be that they are in that category. I mean, they've always been in the African distribution business. They had a distribution center in Lusaka quite early. So they've continued to supply stock up there, but they haven't been as aggressive as Tiger mm -hmm. in going out there and finding, you know, a mid-tier Zimbabwean uh, food producer and acquiring them. They've been happy to kind of stick to their own strengths. The only problem with that approach is that long run, you know, this is a growth market. South Africa, I didn't know any problems with that. And people like the corporate governance and the highly professional system of stock management and production control. They like the fact that the management team is always looking for cost savings and looking to outsource production of the packaging and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, for me anyway, the, the Tiger story, whilst it's larger, just has a bit more runway because they've been prepared to go and get stuck in and do these acquisitions in these other countries where things are really in their infancy. And what Paul is saying, would mm. you be hot or not on this stock? So, I mean, in terms of risks, mm -hmm. you know, there are a couple of risks with the business. Mm -hmm. There are the soft commodity price inputs, like mm -hmm. we said before, that happens to any food producing company. There are job loss risks on the spit side, because quite a few of those guys are in the lower income earnings bracket, which is hard to believe with the price of those shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, very some of those shoes expensive. are they're very good looking, mm -hmm. but they aren't cheap, and, but they've, they've carved out for themselves a very loyal uh, market base. Uh, but obviously, job losses could affect that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what's interesting about the stock is that it's always been discounted based on the view that the different components didn't really seem to fit together. You have shoes and biscuits, for example. Um, I think what people have realized is that instead of looking at the interaction between the products, they've looked at the overall philosophy in terms of what AVI is, and they are brand builders. So as long as you have an item where you can defend the brand, what that item actually is, whether it's a biscuit or a pair of shoes, is less important. Mm -hmm. So I think the market has now accepted that and they have given management credit that they are brand builders. I think what's also very, uh, very important to know is that they are net cash on mm -hmm. the balance sheet. So yes, they might be looking expensive on these current earnings, you know, at a forward multiple of 16 times, whatever it is. But if you take into account that a fantastic acquisition may come up and they can gear up their balance sheet and they can really add something big and interesting to the balance sheet like that mm -hmm. with a cash, with a, with a net cash balance sheet, you know, I think that's something that you should be willing to pay for. So based on those, based on uh, that, not so much a summary, but based on that uh, overall view, I'd say it's hot. So hot for AVI. Your thoughts, Paul? Hot yeah, I'll give them a hot as well. Mm -hmm. On the same basis that you know, between Angus and Simon, I think they do. They're well poised to do something creative going forward. So, so great hot management for me too, yeah. team.
That's so it. Two hots for AVI.